Hi everyone, it's Teddy and Bemi's mom here. After we got married in May, we went on honeymoon to Korea, also to visit my grandma and aunts in September 2013. Korea has very distinctive four seasons, with humid summer going up to 36 Celsius degrees and cold winter going down to minus 15. Winter's not as long and it doesn't snow as much as Toronto, but it could get cold. There's also yellow dust coming from China in the spring and monsoon in the early summer, so the fall is the best season to travel to Korea. But if you don't want to get stuck in crowd and traffic, avoid Korea's biggest holiday, Thanksgiving, on August 15 in lunar calendar. Our trip started by boarding Korean Air for a 14-hour direct flight from Toronto to Incheon. Literally, we were going to the opposite side of the earth. During the flight, we were served two meals and several drinks in between. Of course, I got the award-winning bibimbap with kelp soup. They were still excellent as I remembered. The other chicken and beef meals were okay for plain food, but not as good as bibimbap. When we got too close to Korea, we had to fly around North Korea. Finally, after four movies and two naps, we had arrived at Incheon Airport. Before going to Seoul, we decided to visit Jeju Island first for a few days, so we had three-hour layover until the flight to Jeju. Once we arrived at Jeju Airport, we rented a Kia Forte with super loose wheel and had to drive another hour to the south side of the island to our hotel. By this time, we had traveled over 22 hours, so we were beyond exhausted and starving. Luckily, we found a restaurant that was still open at midnight on the way to hotel. I don't know if it was because we were so hungry, but the food was so delicious. This abalone porridge had plenty of abalone chunks, kelpsu was very flavorful, and this braised mackerel was the best. Even though it was a little spicy for Teddy and Bambi's dad, we finished it all. Once we arrived at hotel at 1 a.m., we had no problem falling asleep even though it would have been 2 p.m. in Toronto. Next morning, we got to see the beauty of the CS Hotel. A lot of TV shows and movies were filmed in this hotel with the traditional architectural features. I also liked how it was private and quiet. Each room had its own entrance with Jeju's volcanic rock fences. Room itself was a little small, but modern and functioning. They also had amazing ocean view. Breakfast was included in the stay, but the menu was the same every day. We both got abalone seaweed soup. It was so good that we ended up eating the same thing the next day. Even all the side dishes were tasty without being overly seasoned. There was egg station where you could cook your own eggs as well. After breakfast, we headed over to Sapjikoji, which translates into Little Cape in English. There, we rented electric scooters, but some parts of the park weren't accessible by scooter. It doesn't look too bad in the photo, but these stairs towards lighthouse were pretty steep. Once up there, we got panoramic view of the entire place, including the glass house and the church building that was built for TV show filming. Jeju Island is a volcanic island formed by eruptions, mainly from Hala Mountain. That's why all the rocks are black and have holes in them. When we came back to our scooters, not surprisingly, this lady was trying to ride on it. This was me yelling at her. No, I'm just joking. I was telling her to get up politely. 
Before going to the next destination, we had little snack at Dunkin' Donuts right at the entrance. I don't know if you can see the difference, but they had skinny bottle of vitamin water. Next up was ocean fishing. For about $25 per person, it included boat ride to and from the fishing houseboat, fishing equipment, and two hours of fishing. This was a sign warning about poisonous fish. After short demonstration of fishing gear, we started fishing. See, look. I think this was the only fish I caught, but Teddy and Bambi's daddy caught quite a lot of different types of fish. Although they were small, they were so colorful and pretty. If you catch big enough fish, you can get them filled on board. On the way back after fishing, we pulled over to a small oh, beach spontaneously. I'm sinking. I'm just gonna leave my shoes here. It was so nice to walk in the water listening to waves without crowd. Definitely it was one of the highlights of the Jeju trip. And it had nice view of Songsan Sunrise Peak. It's one of the most popular destinations in Jeju, and you can climb all the way up to the top of the crater. Then we passed by World Cup Soccer Stadium, which was built for 2002 Korea-Japan FIFA World Cup. For lunch, we dropped by Kraze Burgers inside Jeju International Convention Center next to our hotel. You know, someone likes fast food. For dinner, we found this seafood buffet called Seafood Shangri-La. We picked this one because it was right by the hotel and had pretty good review and photos. But we should have known that it was tourist trap. Not that they are local seafood, but snow crabs and king crabs on the photos were nowhere to be found. And we saw this sea insect walking around. Even though I knew that it wasn't cockroach, Still, it's not appetizing to see a bug inside a restaurant. At least they had really nice ocean view and we got to see beautiful sunset. After unsatisfying dinner, we had to get McDonald's takeout. It was impressed that they already had 24-7 online delivery system and they even put individual drinks in a bag. Next day, we started a day with ATV ride. Because of dust, they provided t-shirts, pants, sunglasses, and masks. Who knew this would be the normal fashion this year? The course was pretty long and well-groomed. Driving along the beach was really nice, and I liked how we had a private guide. Everyone there was very kind and considerate. I just wish there were more jumps and water splashes like dune buggy ride in Jamaica, where I drove like maniac. But I guess that would have been too dirty for pretty Korean people. Next, we tried pistol and clay shooting at Daeyu Land. Then we went to Loveland, where they expressed somewhat of difficult sexual theme in artistic and comical way. Before we entered the park, we had udon for lunch at one of the restaurants there. This was a famous Korean sports drink. A lot of restaurants had this UV sterilization. I'm sure it came handy this year with pandemic. Then it was time to enter the park. Right from the entrance, they weren't shy with what they were representing.
It was really nice park with lots of trees, seating areas, and interactive sculptures. They also had peanuts and breast buns. Of course, we had to try them. You want to break? No! I knew it. Oh, got the stuff all over me. Oh shoot, it's hot. Yeah. On the way back, we were so glad to take the scenic route over the Hala Mountain. We had so much fun driving Curvy Mountain Road and found this gorgeous lookout spot. We also passed by this cute little cow farm right by the road. The last stop was Jusang Jeolli, or columnar jointing in English. These cube or hexagon shaped stone pillars were formed when the lava from Hala Mountain erupted into the sea and it's designated as cultural monument of Korea. Even though it was off season, this place was especially crowded with tourists and you know it by these street vendors too. Since it was late, we had dinner at their hotel restaurant. There was a small selection of salads, side dishes, and condiments to make Korean wraps. Beer was also included in the meal, but it was so hard to pour it from the tap. <laughs> they also gave us complimentary rice wine. For Maine, we got the famous Jeju black pig pork belly. It was fun grilling on a hot stone and the meat was nice and chewy without being fatty and gamey. It was such a nice way to end short but packed trip in Jeju Island. Next morning, we were back on board a plane to Seoul. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give us thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to turn on the bell notification button so that you don't miss the next episode in Seoul. Then I'll see you next time.